A solo pilot took off in a Cessna A-150L, registration November 6167 Foxtrot, on a short flight across Washington State, and never made it. The next day, the aircraft was found wrecked in remote terrain near Renslow. Now, the NTSB's preliminary report has revealed something chilling. This crash may have come down to one simple, preventable mistake. What exactly went wrong? Did the pilot misread the weather or make a decision he couldn't recover from? Let's break it down to see what really happened, and more importantly, what every pilot should take away from it. The flight began like any other. At around 3.31 p.m. local time, the pilot departed Yakima Air Terminal in a Cessna A150L Aerobat. He was headed to Riverview Air Park near Chillon, flying solo under visual flight rules, or VFR. That's important because VFR means the pilot had to navigate by sight, with no backup from instruments if weather turned bad. And on this particular day, the skies were far from ideal. Roughly 20 minutes after takeoff, witnesses near Crescent Bar along the Columbia River spotted a small aircraft flying unusually low. This wasn't normal cruising altitude. It looked like the pilot might have been ducking beneath clouds. That alone suggests trouble. Staying low in a mountainous region can quickly become a dangerous game of cat and mouse with the terrain. By 3.55 p.m., just six minutes before the next scheduled weather report, the flight ended in tragedy. The aircraft crashed about six miles northeast of Renslow, near Whiskey Dick Mountain, a rugged and remote part of central Washington. A hiker nearby later reported hearing a loud noise and noted a thunderstorm and gusty winds in the area at the time. He didn't see the crash, but he felt its presence. Back in Yakima, concern was growing. The pilot hadn't checked in. A friend raised the alarm that evening, prompting the FAA to issue an all knot a search notice for missing aircraft. It wasn't until the next morning that a life flight helicopter spotted the wreckage among snow-covered hills not far from a wind and solar farm. The crash site was hard to reach, isolated, and already covered by fresh snow. So in less than 30 minutes, a simple point-to-point -point flight turned into a fatal disappearance. The pilot likely faced degrading weather, limited visibility, and no instrument rating to fall back on. And in remote terrain like this, there's almost no margin for error. When investigators reached the crash site near Renslow, Washington, they found the Cessna A-150L torn apart over a stretch of rugged, snow-covered terrain. The first impact mark, a gouge in the dirt and snow, measured about 12 feet wide and 35 feet long. From there, debris trailed out nearly 354 feet, ending with the main wreckage resting upside down on a magnetic heading of 197 degrees. The fact that all major structural components were located within this debris path tells us one important thing. The aircraft wasn't breaking apart in the air. It was intact before it hit the ground. That's a key clue. When an aircraft impacts terrain in one piece, and with this kind of violence, it often points to a loss of control in flight not a mechanical failure. So what caused that loss of control? The weather might be the most significant factor here. The nearest official weather observation, just 12 nautical miles away at Bowers Field Airport, reported overcast skies at 2,900 feet above ground level, visibility of 10 miles, and winds from the northwest at nine knots. On the surface, that doesn't seem too threatening, but weather isn't uniform across mountainous regions like central Washington. In fact, a hiker who was near the crash site reported a thunderstorm and strong gusty winds at the time of the accident, conditions that were not visible in the official meter. So it's possible, if not likely, that the pilot encountered localized, fast-changing weather, strong downdrafts, low clouds, and maybe even lightning. And here's where things get even more dangerous. The pilot was flying under VFR and was not instrument rated. That means he was relying entirely on outside visibility to navigate. No GPS guidance, no instrument scanning, no training to interpret the artificial horizon or altimeter in poor visibility. The absence of a radio distress call also says something. If the pilot had realized he was in serious trouble, he might have tried to communicate. But no call came. That usually points to a sudden, overwhelming event, like inadvertent entry into IMC, 
or instrument meteorological conditions. Once inside a cloud or storm, spatial disorientation can set in almost immediately. Without visual cues, the inner ear can trick a pilot into thinking the aircraft is flying level when it's actually banking into a deadly spiral. And with only seconds or minutes to react, recovery is extremely difficult, especially in mountainous terrain, where altitude and time are both limited. At that point, even a seasoned pilot could struggle. For one flying solo without instrument certification, in worsening weather, the odds are stacked dangerously high. In summary, while the NTSB hasn't issued a final ruling, the preliminary evidence paints a consistent picture. The aircraft was structurally sound, the pilot was flying under VFR in deteriorating conditions, and the crash was most likely caused by a loss of control after entering weather the pilot wasn't equipped to handle. This accident highlights one of the most dangerous traps in general aviation, continuing a VFR flight into IMC, Instrument Meteorological Conditions. It's a scenario that kills dozens of pilots every year. On paper, flying under VFR sounds simple. Stay out of the clouds, maintain visual reference to the ground, and follow the rules. But when the weather starts closing in, the lines blur fast. For a non-instrument rated pilot, entering IMC is like flying blind, with no training, no tools, and no margin for error. In the case of November 6167 Foxtrot, we already know the pilot wasn't instrument rated. That alone meant he wasn't prepared to handle cloud penetration, let alone a full-blown thunderstorm. Studies have shown that VFR pilots can become spatially disoriented within minutes after entering IMC, and when that happens, the aircraft can enter a gradual tightening turn, what's known as a graveyard spiral. The pilot may feel like the wings are level while the aircraft is actually descending in a bank, accelerating until impact. The crash site, rugged, remote, and snow-covered, adds another layer of danger. Flying in mountainous terrain always demands extra caution, especially when weather is changing rapidly. You lose altitude options, visibility drops quicker, and radar coverage can be spotty. In areas like Whiskey Dick Mountain, a pilot flying low to avoid clouds risks controlled flight into terrain, or CFIT, without even realizing it's happening until it's too late. And then, there's the weather itself. While airport meters may suggest relatively decent conditions, like 10 miles of visibility and moderate winds, real-world flying is rarely that simple. Mountainous terrain generates unpredictable microclimates, Thunderstorms, downdrafts, and wind shear can appear suddenly. The pilot might have seen blue sky when he took off, but a wall of weather likely awaited him en route. So what we're looking at is a textbook chain of threats. Marginal weather, no instrument training, pressure to complete the flight, and mountainous terrain. And when even one of those factors is mishandled, it can turn deadly. This accident is tragic, but not without lessons. First and foremost, never underestimate the weather. It's easy to glance at a METAR or a forecast and think it's good enough, but forecasts don't capture everything, especially not local mountain weather. Always dig deeper, and if you're heading into unfamiliar terrain, consider calling a briefer or using real-time radar tools. They can give you a fuller picture than any text report. Second, know your limits. If you're not instrument rated, don't treat clouds as something you can sneak under. That mindset can lead you right into IMC, and without the training, your odds of recovery are slim. Spatial disorientation isn't just a theory, it's a physiological reality. Your brain will lie to you, and you won't even know it's happening until it's too late. That's why getting an instrument rating is one of the best safety investments a VFR pilot can make. It's not just about flying in the clouds, it's about being able to escape if you get caught, and having the confidence to make the right call. And beyond ratings, stay sharp. Practice emergency procedures. Run through what-if scenarios before every flight. Ask yourself, if the weather turns worse, what's my out? And finally, we have to talk about mindset. Get their itis, that quiet pressure to complete a flight because someone's waiting or it's just a short hop, can be deadly. Pilots must be willing to delay, turn around, or even cancel altogether, it's not a failure. It's a smart, disciplined decision that could save your life. So through this tragic accident, the most crucial takeaway is probably this. 
Good pilots aren't just skilled. They're cautious, honest, and flexible. Flying demands constant respect for the environment and your own limitations. And sometimes, the best decision you can make is to stay on the ground.